Well, we have a little bit of snow flurries here coming down as I proceed to give you a little pep talk on homework. And I'm going to tell two stories. One is inspired from a Department of Management at UNCA, Management Accountancy, where it was a chair that said something very profound to me once. Uh, Dr. Bob Williams, he was chair of our you know, management department. And he's at the time you know, telling something about the problems in management from his experience. He worked like 25 years or so as a PhD in chemistry in the management position in industry. And he said that 99% of all problems are communication problems. And that's what whole work helps you do. It helps you learn to communicate so that you don't have that kind of a problem when you get a job. And the second story was when I was setting up the two plus two program in engineering as a young chair of physics 40 years ago, I was at a conference where there were several professionals and one was an IBM executive. And I really wanted to ask his advice about what I could recommend students to take for engineering as an elective. And I was thinking maybe thermodynamics might be good. Two plus two, two years at UNCA, two years at NC State. And I got enough courage to go up to this guy. He was like a big guy, a presence, you know, executive presence, like a CEO type. And uh, I, I go up to him and I ask him uh, what would be good to have students take as an elective for engineering. And he said, tell them to take humanities. And I almost fell off the chair. I'm thinking like, like what? We have a very good humanities program at UNCA. Students take like four courses in the humanities. He said that he had interviewed a guy from MIT. It was brilliant, but he said that he was worthless to me. Can't communicate. So he says, you need to be able to talk or communicate in the job to people that are not as smart as you. And also that are smarter. So it goes both ways. So the homework assignment helps you do that. And that's very, very important. Are you doing the homework for yourself? or you're doing it for someone else. And it's very easy to tell when I look at a homework if you're doing it for yourself or for someone else. So bear those two principles in mind that encourage uh, the idea of communication. And once I had a physics major that was writing a paper in humanities for a literature professor on black holes. And I thought, wonderful, this is great. If you have to explain a black hole to someone that has a PhD in literature, doesn't really understand you know, science, physics, that is great training. For communication. So let's get along with the show. So here's our homework protocol guide. And the first thing uh, here, I have about eight points. Uh, first one is one, state the problem. State the problem. It's best to state the problem in your own words. And it can be very, very brief. Here, here is a brief example where the student has lambda equals question mark. I then see the formula with lambda in it. The speed of light is wavelength times frequency. Then I have here the speed of light, and then I have a solution for the wavelength, and then the frequency is given for the 88.1 FM, uh, the radio. This is a megahertz. Uh, in terms of the units. And then I see the plug-in here, the setup, and I get the answer. And nice, look, box off the answer. Isn't it very nice? Very nice, nice work. And notice that the significant figures here, very, very good work. Do not cross out. Do on scrap paper first, be neat. And this is definitely neat. That's very, very nice. Two, three, communicate. Flow of work should be obvious as you can see here in this nice example. But notice that you don't have to use a ruled paper. Here's a student who did not use ruled paper, but uh, still you know, very neat and easy to follow. The number of slits in the diffraction gradient, a little diagram here to go with the uh, problem, and then relevant formulas from the class are being used here and putting in the numbers. And when you get lots of numbers on a calculator, notice the uh, nice rounding off to two significant figures, the 4.9 meters, very nice. So these are good examples of very, very neat work. So that's three, communicate. Flow of work should be obvious. And the scan should be very readable. 
So this is very readable. Uh, the contrast is good, uh, light and dark, and it's not too small, for example. So you want to, you know, bear that in mind. And talking about neatness, I went online to find an example of something that was not neat. So here I googled sloppy homework. And this came up. And here I clicked on this. And yeah, look at this. It, a, a teacher, when a teacher grades homework, uh, the time is valuable. If I can grade the homework fast, that's going to be a good thing because you're communicating. I, I can't grade this fast. In fact, I probably have to spend a lot of, too much time doing this. So what does the teacher do? Too sloppy, minus four. So if it's like worth 10 points, you just lost four points. So it's like six. That's like a D. You just got a D. All right. So that's an example of just not clear what's going on. I, I shouldn't have to take time to figure out what you're trying to do. That's the communication problem. No matter how smart you are, remember that MIT example I gave you. And here, the scan size should be uh, small enough that you can mail it. Usually when you convert to a PDF, you can get something relatively small. Notice that some students will take a picture with the iPhone, get some beautiful pictures. Just be careful that when you do it, it looks nice. It looks like this. Other students will scan it in when they prepare the PDF file. And it should be one PDF file for all the homework, and the homework should be in order. The, and the, the name, the way we name it, I found that most students like to capitalize their last name. So let's do this. Put the letter of the assignment. This first assignment is actually O, but after the O one, it will be A, B, C, D, etc. And this would be, say, Marie Curie, you put the P, uppercase P, underscore, and uppercase your first letter, Curie, dot PDF. That's homework P for Madame Curie. The grading rubric, it's a very rough rubric that I use. Four points if you state the problem, show all the steps, and occasionally have some English, some comments, and plus four for mathematical notational accuracy. And here, plus two for neatness, which includes proper uh, handwriting size, you know, large enough to see legible and all that. A question that comes up is, can I work with others? Yes, you're encouraged to work with others. A scientist do that on a regular basis. So here, that's fine, but your homework must look different. When you turn it in, it's your own. Now, I've done this for so many years, I can tell in a glance who's, who's doing homework with who. I can tell. Even if you don't have it exactly the same, I usually can tell. So you don't want to have it exactly the same because that's called plagiarizing. And if you do that, then you, you know, then I, the UNCA policy is I have to report you to the administration and there has to be a penalty and all that. So we don't want to go there. So do not copy your homework. So what does this mean then when you can do homework? Here's a good example. This is the room where physics majors hang out at UNCA. And here are two physics majors doing homework, using a blackboard to like work out some assignment. And that's, that's very good. That's encouraged. And then here, the physics majors now say they're, then they have their notes and, and making notes. And then when these students turn their notes in, they'll, it'll look different. I mean, the solution will be basically the same, but when they put in words and explain things in their own style, we're going to be able to tell that there's a difference. And that's a good point. That's what you want to do. If it's not sufficiently different, but it's not obviously word for word copying verbatim, what I would do if it's suspiciously close, I give the benefit of the doubt to the student and accept it, but I can't write you a good letter of recommendation because I don't know, I don't know your work. In other words, I, when I look at, think of you, I, I think of the other student at the same time, and I don't know just how much you contributed versus the other. So that's where I won't be able to, you know, write you a good letter if that's the case. So work together, but when you write things up, don't share that. Don't share your final version. Turn your final version here. Turn your final version in as your own work with your own explanations and details and your own way of putting in steps, how many steps to put in, and then you'll have 
your own report. Here's a student from UNCA that graduated as an excellent communicator in the homework she did at Samantha Creech and also in the presentation she did in undergraduate research. Now, I Googled her. I Googled her and this popped up at the UNCA site and see she was our valedictorian. Now in college, we, we refer that here in our school as the Manly E. Wright Award winner. That's the student that's the highest in scholarship, number one, a physics major. Her research was in astrophysics and she could communicate so well, no matter if it was writing or or the oral presentation. So that's what we want to strive for. And you know, I have found that when I do homework, if I write slowly, my handwriting is so much better. So like, don't scribble. In other words, just take your time when you write things out and you'll be surprised that you can write much better than you thought. So that's another thing to think about. And they're basically my comments, and then we're, you're off to do your homework. So good luck, and thanks for signing up for the course.